so let's start with a super quick revision of the first chapter of uh, GST that is GST in India and introduction yes uh, now first of all GST full form goods and service tax this law had come into effect from which date 1st July 2017 this was made applicable to whole of India even to Jammu and Kashmir it was made applicable from 8th July 2017 we already know that this particular tax is a destination based consumption tax okay two words two terms are very very important here first one is destination tax and the other one is a consumption based tax okay destination tax what do you mean by that okay wherever wherever the finally goods are consumed okay wherever in whichever state the goods are finally consumed the revenue of the GST is going to belong to that particular state government right okay then after that uh, to bring this particular GST law now as we discussed this was made applicable from 1st July 2017 or to Jammu and Kashmir from 8th July 2017 uh, Obviously, the law was applicable from this day, but that does not mean that the working on this particular law started from that day. No, right? So, can we say the working on this was started way, way, way back, many years back, the planning etc. had started and then slowly and steadily this took a shape and then the law was formed. Okay. So, now for this particular thing, as you already know, whenever we want to pass any particular act at that time, there should be a bill. Okay, so now for this, we required a constitutional amendment. Whenever we had to uh, bring this particular GST law, we required uh, a constitutional amendment because earlier, earlier, the powers to collect taxes, okay, either the central government had uh, exclusive power to collect the taxes, example, income tax law or example, uh, your uh, service tax under the old regime. Okay, and then state government, state government gave powers to the state to collect taxes example VAT was there and uh, so on okay so now why was this constitutional amendment required to bring this GST law okay in uh, for the purpose of your GST okay for the purpose of GST now we had to give powers okay now we had to give powers to both central as well as state to collect taxes okay we had to give powers to both of them to collect the same taxes that is your gst for that purpose gs uh, for that purpose we required the constitutional amendment okay the entire thing we had discussed in our uh, uh, regular lectures as well as our fast track lectures so now for this uh, in the year 2014 they introduced this constitution amendment bill okay then the bill was passed normally in lok sabha and rajya sabha and then after that the president gave the assent and then the constitution amendment act okay constitution we are not talking about gst act okay we are talking about constitution amendment act was passed and because of which it became very easy to introduce gst in india because first we had to do amendment in our constitution okay so first constitution amendment was done and then the gst laws were brought okay then after that once your uh, constitution act was passed it was passed in september 2016 after that they started introducing your gst legislations so central gst legislation was introduced okay then it was introduced in lok sabha then Rajya Sabha, then President Assent was received. Okay, then after that, then after that, once the central law was passed, after that, states and the union territories, okay, states and the union territories, they introduced their respective laws. Okay, uh, just like you must have heard about SGST, uh, state GST and UTGST. So, they passed their own legislations, they passed their own legislations and then it came into picture. And, and with effect from 1st July 2017, this GST law came into picture, income, indirect taxes, uh, not income tax, indirect taxes reform was done and except for Jammu and Kashmir and uh, within a week, okay, within a week's time, that is by 8th of July 2017, this law was even extended to Jammu and Kashmir, the entire thing is given in your book. Can you see this entire diagram everyone? Yes. Okay. Now, which all laws came into force with this indirect taxes reform? So, your CGST Act came into picture, SGST Act came into picture, UTGST Act came into picture and very, very important that is Compensation uh, Cess Act or we can say GST Compensation Cess Act. This came into picture. Man, why was this GST Compensation Cess Act? We'll come to that. Okay. Apart from that, apart from that, there were many intermittent acts which were passed okay just like your uh, whenever we want to bring any amendment we pass this finance act etc those amendment acts came into picture so uh, if i talk about if i talk about center okay if i talk about center then your cgst act came into picture 
आई जी एस टी एक्ट केम इन टू पिक्चर यू टी जी एस टी एक्ट केम इन टू पिक्चर एंड जी एस टी सेस एक्ट कॉम्पनसेशन सेस एक्ट दीज केम इन टू पिक्चर नाउ टॉकिंग फ्रॉम द स्टेट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके इन स्टेट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे सेट दैट ओके नाउ विल द स्टेट्स मेक देयर ओन लॉज सो इट दे सेट दैट येस बिकॉज नाउ पार्लियामेंट हैज गिवन नाउ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज गिवन पावर टू सेंटर एज वेल एज द स्टेट टू कलेक्ट जी एस टी सो सेंटर मेड इट्स लॉ ओके सेंट्रल सी जी एस टी एक्ट IGST Act, UTGST Act and Compensation Act. Now, even the states will make their own laws. So now there came a bifurcation. There were uh, states. Okay, just like Maharashtra. Maharashtra made its own law. See, uh, Maharashtra SGST Act. Okay, now what about Union Territories? So un within Union Territories, within Union Territories, they did a bifurcation. They said that, example Delhi. Okay, Delhi is a Union Territory. But you, Delhi said that I am a Union Territory. I will not go. under uh, utgst i will make my own legislature okay so now uh, three states okay delhi puducherry and jammu kashmir these three these three even though these three were treated as union territories they considered themselves as state and they made their own legislature okay so these three we can call it as union territory with their own state legislature so for the purpose of gst they will be considered as normal state okay they will be considered as normal state because they have made their own legislation they have made their own gst legislation now apart from that apart from that chandigarh okay andaman nicobar then your lakshwadeep then your le ladakh okay uh, ladakh we can say okay then your daman diu dadra and nagar haveli and other territory now these these will be called as union territories i think you can see the list here everyone can you see this okay uh, in the main lecture i told you we can remember it as call d and others yes that was your abbreviation that was your short form to remember these particular uh, union territories these were the union territories who did not make their own state legislations and if they did not make their own state legislations can i say can i say they will be coming under the utgst okay means these rest of the union territories will be following the utgst because they have not made their own laws so the law which was made by the center that will be applicable to them okay then going on to the next thing that is concept of gst in concept of gst basic basic pointers are covered basically they are talking about the concept of your uh, goods and service tax act so they are telling that gst law is made with a purpose of uh, uh, like making the taxes applicable only on the value addition okay making the taxes applicable only on value addition now at the first stage let's say let's let's talk about the entire chain from manufacturer to wholesalers to retailers to consumers okay when the manufacturer is manufacturing something and he is selling okay at that time can i say is producing a particular product at that time there will be a particular tax on sale which will be paid to the government okay later can i say after manufacturer when the manufacturer sells it to the wholesaler wholesaler will do some value addition and he will sell it to the reseller uh, to the retailer we can say okay whatever is the value addition what is the profit that is added by the manufacturer on that on that ultimately the tax will be paid by the a wholesaler similarly when the retailer is doing some value addition profit element is getting added and when he is selling it to the uh, ultimate consumer can i say he is also adding some profit on that profit there will be some taxes so basically what what are they trying to do they are trying to say that okay we are not taxing the entire selling price again we will not tax the entire selling price again whereas we will levy gst only on the value addition Are you clear with this, ma'am? But how is this possible? This is possible by giving input tax credit, right? This is possible by giving credit on the taxes which is already paid. Now let's say, let's talk about, let's talk about wholesaler to retailer. Okay, let's talk about wholesaler to retailer. Can I say when the wholesaler is selling it to the retailer, there will be a particular selling price. On that selling price, there will be a particular output tax, the tax on sale that is payable. Okay, but. has the wholesaler already paid some taxes yes wholesaler has already paid some taxes at the time when he was purchasing it from the manufacturer the taxes that he has paid at the time of manufacture he will get the credit of the same right credits are allowed and at every level okay at every level we will get the credit and therefore this this amount of taxes that we have already paid at the time of purchase this will be subtracted from my output tax and we are responsible to pay only the balance taxes that is the entire you know lifeline that is the lifeline of our gst 
and yes ma'am then ultimately ultimately who will bear the final tax as you already know as you already know the final tax will be borne by the ultimate consumer who is not going to sell it further who is going to consume it okay because can we say entire value addition okay at all the earlier stages the credits were available right but now who will ultimately pay to the government this will be ultimately paid the amount will be ultimately borne by the consumer because he is not going to sell it further so can we say at that time if he is not going to sell it further the chain breaks there so the final tax will be borne by the consumer and yes here they are trying that here they are trying that there is no cascading effect of taxes that is uh, uh, that is the entire price is not taxed only the value added okay only the profit added only the value added at each stage only that should be taxed okay we have this example given here you can just refer it once okay now what were the deficiencies now what was the need okay whenever a new law comes that comes because there was some deficiency under the old laws now we have got some seven eight points covered in this particular deficiencies now they were, they are telling that before before gst before gst you had your uh, state vat okay you had your central sales tax cst law then you had your service tax on goods we had vat and cst on services we had got our uh, service tax now what was the problem there now they were telling that there were some items okay there were some transactions on which uh, your vat was also applicable plus service tax was also applicable okay so it was getting a hit it was getting a hit of both things example restaurant okay earlier when you used to go to restaurant at that time vat was also applicable plus service tax was also applicable okay then then uh, there were certain items on which vat was also applicable plus excise duty was also applicable that is that is first excise duty was applicable on a particular manufacturing and at the same time on the value on the value of goods excise was applicable then on this total value vat was also applicable okay then your sen vat okay then your sen vat credit was not available that is your excise duty which was levied on the manufacture of goods credit of that was not available so can we say that was considered as our cost because of that my cost went up okay then there were multiple other taxes okay there were multiple other taxes like luxury tax entertainment tax falana tax x tax y tax etc so because of that the credit was obviously not available okay you did not get any benefit of those taxes paid so because of that can i say my cost increased yes acha then then another clash another clash was like service tax the right to levy taxes on the services was there only with the center that is service tax was levied only by the center okay similarly similarly for goods also for goods also vat the power to levy vat was there only with the state right only central sales tax on certain transactions only that was allowed to be levied by center otherwise on goods the power to levy the taxes was there only with the state okay so this became a big clash between your center as well as the state now that problem is resolved in your gst because in gst we just now studied we did constitutional amendment because of which both of them have the powers to levy the taxes okay and your uh, cst was totally opposite of gst okay in cst you know what was the logic in cst the logic was it was a origin based taxes that is the tax revenue will go to that particular government from where the sale started okay whereas what is happening in gst gst is a destination based tax destination based tax means the uh, the revenue is going to flow to that particular state where the goods are ultimately consumed right acha now let's go to another thing okay uh, many points about gst and the framework of gst has been included here now first of all they are telling that this is a dual gst model okay dual gst model means the gst will be levied simultaneously by two persons one is by the center and the other one is by the states okay then now what are the type of taxes under gst that will be levied okay four types of taxes cgst sgst or ut gst and the last one is igst okay uh now ma'am when which type of taxes will be levied okay now whenever there is an interstate supply interstate supply means from one state to another state okay from one state to another state whenever there is a sale that is happening example let's talk from maharashtra to gujarat at that time at that time igst will be levied okay interstate at that time igst integrated gst will be levied this is collected by the central government okay this is levied also and this is collected also by the central government and later then later 
this IGST tax will be distributed amongst the state and the center. When we talk about intrastate supply, intrastate means within the same state. Okay, when we are doing any intrastate supply at that time, two types of taxes will be collected and uh, levied. One is CGST, Central GST, and the other one will be SGST or UTGST. Okay, SGST or UTGST. Okay, now let's say, let's say if the rate of taxes is 18%, normal on any particular goods, the rate, goods or services, if the rate of taxes is 18%, then in that case, 9% will be collected by way of CGST and balance 9% will be collected by SGST or UTGST. Okay, now let's say, let's say I am talking about a sale which is happening between, a sale which is happening between Maharashtra to Maharashtra. At that time, CGST and SGST will be applicable. Okay, why? Because Maharashtra is not a union territory, so UTGST law will not come into picture. Okay, now let's say there is a, a sale which is happening from Lakshwadeep to Lakshwadeep. At that time, CGST and UTGST will be applicable. Why UTGST? Because, because it was a union territory not having its own state le legislature. So, at that time, we had studied that UTGST law will be applicable. Are you clear with this? Okay, let's say there is a sale happening between, let's say there is a sale happening between Delhi to Delhi. Delhi was a state, Delhi was a union territory or a state with its own state legislature. So, UTGST will not be applicable. So, SGST will only be applicable. So, the uh, uh, taxes which will be applicable from Delhi to Delhi will be CGST and SGST. Are you able to understand this everyone? Yes, that for the purpose of simplification, for the purpose of deciding the rates of GST, they have done some classification for goods they have bifurcated. Now we have n number of goods getting traded in our economy, getting manufactured in our economy. So they are telling that we are going to use HSN code, okay, harmonized system of nomenclature. We are going to do the naming or numbering of the goods as per this and based upon that, okay, on the basis of that, we are going to decide the rate of GST that will be applicable and for services, we are going to use the concept of service accounting code that is SAC, okay, on the basis of SAC, what are we going to do? On the basis of SAC, we are going to divide the services and then we are going to decide the rates of GST that will be applicable. Then there was a concept of composition scheme which was introduced under your GST. Now they are telling that now uh, obviously the purpose under GST is to bring more and more people under the purview of GST. Okay, but then there are some small taxpayers also. Okay, uh, so what they have done is they have introduced a scheme called as we will study this in detail when we go to further chapters, but they have introduced a scheme called as composition scheme for small taxpayers where where in this particular case they are not required to maintain full-fledged details about their sale and purchases and they are not required to follow this entire scheme of chain of credits etc they can pay a nominal amount of tax on their sale and that will be sufficient okay but there are many terms and conditions attached to it but yes that we will study when we go ahead this is given this is given under your composition scheme then any person who wants to come under GST, that person has to get to himself registered. Okay, so for the purpose of registration, for the purpose of registration, there should be some limit. Okay, let's say today I do a sale of only rupees 5,000. Does, uh, does that mean that I am liable to uh, get myself registered under GST? No. Okay, so can I say for a particular year or in a particular year, an uh, aggregate threshold limit of GST should be met? Right, uh, aggregate turnover limit should be achieved. If that aggregate turnover limit is achieved, then only I become liable to get registered under GST. So, thresh that for that particular purpose, we have got a separate chapter called as registration. So, those threshold limits, etc., we are going to study in that chapter. Then, apart from, yes, apart from the relief that we have given to the small taxpayers under the composition scheme, now they have also introduced some exemptions. Okay, some products, some products will be totally exempted. Okay, example, your milk. Okay, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, etc. These are totally exempted from GST. For that, we have got a different chapter called as exemptions from GST. Okay, then to regularize all these things, to make all these things online, they have introduced, they have introduced this website that is GST.com. Uh, 
www.gst.gov.in that is the common portal which is maintained okay this particular website is maintained by gst and goods and service tax network which is a section 8 company and uh, this particular website okay if i want to get myself registered go to the website create login get registered okay if i want to uh, pay the gst go to this particular website if i want to submit any gst returns go to this particular website okay just for the purpose of e way bill okay we will study that also for that also we have got a separate chapter for the purpose of e way bill there is a different website called as e way bill gst.gov.in on which you can create your e way bills and do all those things right then after that now to maintain this particular website can we say we will require some service providers okay we will require some suvidha providers or service providers that is nothing but your gsp gsp stands for gst suvidha providers and asp stands for application service provider we have been getting this help from uh, tcs infosys taxman etc who are going to help us in maintaining this particular website then in between we had somewhere studied about this compensation cess act now what happened was earlier earlier as we discussed now the power to levy taxes on goods okay power to levy taxes on goods like uh, that was there only with the states okay now now what is happening now what is happening the power to levy taxes on goods and service tax now this is being given to both center as well as the state so can i say the state is going to lose out on some revenue so to compensate the states okay to compensate the states, they have come up with this particular cess called as compensation cess which will be levied on some um, you know uh, some such products whose sales india doesn't want to promote okay example pan masala tobacco and all those things on such luxury products or such big products uh, the compensation cess will be levied and the revenue will be belonging to the states because they have suffered some losses because of introduction of gst right and the um, last one year that is gst which is a tax on both goods as well as services earlier earlier we had separate taxes on goods or separate taxes on services now this is a particular tax which is applicable on all the goods and services except except for except for alcoholic liquor for human consumption can you see this everyone alcoholic liquor for human consumption this is kept totally outside the purview of gst but yes still state excise and uh, vat cst is applicable on it okay and on petroleum crude pe uh, petroleum crude natural gas uh, aviation turbine fuel petrol diesel etc on this also till now there is no gst they are, they have told that they we will notify a date okay later we will do notify a date from which the taxes will be levied on this particular items but till the time till the time gst comes on it till that time at least central excise and vat cst will be applicable on it okay then there are some products then there are some products example tobacco on this particular product central excise is also applicable plus gst is also applicable okay then your drugs opm indian hemp etc on that also state excise is also applicable plus gst is also applicable so th these are the products these are the products we are which are still getting taxed double okay at the time of manufacture central excise or state excise is applicable and at the time of sale gst is also applicable okay alcoholic liquor totally outside the purview of gst petroleum diesel natural gas petrol etc on that uh, the gst will be applicable but from a notified date which will be notified later on are you clear with this okay and because of this can we say because of introduction of gst many taxes have been subsumed okay or which have been subsumed or which have been removed from uh, removed and now only gst will be applicable example service tax is totally gone okay vat vat on some products okay vat on majority of the product we should say that is gone cst is gone then your excise duty central excise duty and such other product such other taxes which were earlier applicable now these are gone because now gst is applicable on the same okay there are some taxes which are still there okay the list is given here basic custom duty we have discussed about each and every taxes uh, in detail in our lectures okay basic custom duty then uh, compensation says entertainment tax which is levied by the local authority then property tax which is nothing to do with your goods and services then stamp duty tax etc stamp duty etc these are still there under your uh, economy and these are still made applicable
right then after that then after that you have the next one that is how to utilize the input tax credit now ma'am first of all what do you mean by input tax credit input tax credit was the taxes which we have paid at the time of our purchases okay now let's say when a read when a wholesaler is purchasing from a manufacturer can i say even he would have paid some taxes can he get the credit of the same can he take the benefit of the same can he reduce it from his output tax liability answer is yes now how to utilize this particular credit okay we have done numerical examples in our main lecture here i am just covering since this is a super quick revision i am just covering the overview of the same now if you have paid igst means you have got the igst credit can we use this igst credit yes first use it for the igst liability then use it for cgst sgst no problem in that okay suppose if you have got cgst credit with you cgst credit is to be first used for paying the cgst liability okay then it can be used for paying igst liability but do not to use it for sgst liability because cross utilization of uh, central and state gst is totally not allowed similarly for sgst or utgst use it for the same liability use it for sgst or utgst respectively okay then then if you still have some sgst credit available with you then use it for igst liability plus but please do not use it for cgst liability right then seamless flow of credit this we have already discussed what happens in case of seamless flow of credit here they are telling that here they are telling that suppose if suppose if there is a intra state supply okay intra state supply so can we say cgst and sgst will be charged so this particular revenue should belong to that particular center cgst will go to the center sgst will go to which state sgst will go to that state where the goods are ultimately consumed okay uh, uh, so if i am talking about maharashtra to maharashtra so uh, whenever there is a sale happening from maharashtra to maharashtra let's say 10900 900 so can we say can we say the sale is happening from maharashtra to maharashtra so this 900 will go to the center right this uh, 900 will go to the center this 900 will go to the maharashtra state am i very clear with this okay now later 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 let's say let's say we are selling let's say we are selling it to some other person within the same state okay within the same state at that time this is the amount of gst that is payable so can i say some portion uh, now first of all at the time of paying this can we use the old credit which is available yes so we now 1080 1080 is payable earlier we have already paid 900 and 900 so we will utilize it so ultimately 180 180 is the uh, amount that we are now going to pay to the government so earlier we had paid 900 to the center and we had paid 900 to the maharashtra state right now we are additionally paying 180 to the center and 180 to the destination state that is going to be maharashtra only so ultimately 1080 1080 reaches to the government in this particular manner okay later okay see this here is the calculation later when we are doing a interstate supply okay when we are doing interstate supply now can i say at that time at that time suppose if first does a transaction okay they have taken it totally uh suppose if in uh, we, now the here they have taken the example of interstate supply in that case let's uh, take first there is a intra state supply so can we say this will go to the center and this will go to the revenue of the first state where the goods are consumed okay then when you are selling it from state 1 to state 2 now can i say the revenue should also move the revenue should also move from one state to the another state and at that time can we say igst will be applicable so this igst can be collected and levied by only by whom this will be collected and levied only by the center so can we say now to pay this igst we can use the cgst credit and the igst credit so can we say revenue is moving from center to igst the revenue is moving and from state also the revenue is going to move to igst because we are going to use it for the for the purpose of paying the taxes yes i have taken a full fledged clear example in our main lectures please do refer it okay so what are they trying to tell us here what are they trying to tell us here as the goods move okay as the goods move along with the goods the revenue the taxes is also going to move okay ultimately ultimately it will go to okay see there will be three heads one is cgst another one is sgst and the other one is igst okay center is collected by the central government state goes to that particular state government where the goods are consumed okay and igst this is collected by the central government but ultimately they will do their internal workings and then this will be distributed this will be distributed between the state and the centers 
are you clear with this yes please do refer this particular calculation which i had done in the main lectures that was very very simple to understand the entire concept okay then after this now going on to the next one that is your benefits of gst okay in benefits of gst uh, as the government also says as we already know there are many many uh, benefits given here now first of all first of all can we say because of gst because of gst because of the credit seamless credits that is available because of so many taxes being subsumed under gst and only one tax one nation one tax that is the uh, motive of the government so because of this can we say there is a unified market okay there is a unified uh, mar national market that is being created here okay more and more people are now doing manufacturing here in india even because of that make in india initiative yes and because of this can i say can we say more and more money is getting invested here in india which is boosting the economy also which is creating so many employment opportunities also right then after that then after that because of this because of this because of one tax okay because of because now so many taxes have gone and only one tax is applicable so it becomes easy even from the taxation point of view okay it becomes easy from taxation point of view it becomes easy from administration tax administration point of view also okay can we say even cost have started reducing okay if credits are available then i will also it will also impact my cost right it will also reduce my cost okay then this entire thing entire gst thing is now made online you have to file all the returns online you have to make the payment of taxes online etc because of that because of information technology usage everything has become automated okay if i show it as my sales then it automatically gets reflected as your purchases okay we have gone to that level of automation and what all things they are planning we can't even think of it okay right then because of that because of things getting online because of things getting simpler can we say many of the clients many of the clients or many of the persons taxpayers etc they have started doing the work on their own also because of that can i say our compliance cost also also gets reduced right acha now because of this our industries are getting boosted okay agriculture industry is getting boosted then from primary to tertiary all the sectors or primary to the final service sector all the sectors are getting a boost because of that okay cascading effect is totally gone or almost gone we can say right even that is an advantage because of that the cost get reduces if the cost get reduces can we say it helps in controlling the inflation also yes and then because of these schemes because of these composition scheme exemption scheme we are even able to uh, extend the benefits of gst to small traders and entrepreneurs also are you able to understand this these are some of the benefits of the gst and now going on to the last one that is your constitutional provisions now as we know that india is a democratic democratic country where there is a three tier federal structure okay first one is comprising of the union government next one is comprising of the state government and the third one is comprising of the local government that is our local municipal corporations etc now the power to levy the taxes okay power to levy the taxes is given to all the governments okay i can give you example okay i can give you the example example central government has got the sole power to collect income taxes when when we talk about state government okay when we talk about state government state government has a power to levy uh, taxes like profession tax etc okay then local government local government collects its local body taxes so power has been given to respectively each of them to collect the taxes that is as per the indian constitution okay but same tax same tax was not allowed to be collected by two of them together because of which we had to do this constitutional amendment under gst because because what happened in case of gst was what happened in case of gst was same gst can be collected by the center as well as the state okay then now we have got we have to we have got references of few articles out of our constitution let's see what do they talk about article number 265 okay what does article number 265 talk about article number 265 says that no taxes can be collected except with the authority of law obviously okay i cannot levy any xyz taxes on any particular customer let's say i am uh, providing my video lectures at the time of providing my video lectures i am collecting gst that is okay that is as per the authority okay i also start collecting something called as arpita tax allowed or not allowed that is not allowed so i can collect anything but only uh, i can collect any taxes but only when it is as per the authority 
राइट अच्छा देन आर्टिकल नंबर टू फोर्टी फाइव दिस इज वेरी क्लियर आर्टिकल विच से पार्लियामेंट हैज द पावर टू मेक लॉ फॉर द एंटायर कंट्री ओके वेर एज स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर लेजिस्लेचर ऑफ अ स्टेट कैन मेक लॉज ओनली फॉर इट्स स्टेट ओके दिस इज ऑलरेडी गिवन मैम वाई आर यू टीचिंग अस दिस दीज आर द आर्टिकल्स विच इज गिवन इन अवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ओके एंड योर आईसीआई वॉन्ट्स यू टू नो अबाउट दीज पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल्स सो दैट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वाई जी एस टी लॉ राइट देन आर्टिकल नंबर टू फोर्टी सिक्स विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट इट गिवस रिस्पेक्टिव अथॉरिटी टू द यूनियन एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट फॉर लिविंग द टैक्सेस मीन आर्टिकल नंबर टू फोर्टी सिक्स सेज दैट ओके यूनियन गवर्नमेंट और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट यू कैन कलेक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर टैक्सेस देन इट सेज टू द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ओके यू कैन लेवी एंड यू कैन कलेक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर टैक्सेस सो बेसिकली कैन वी से कैन वी से इफ वी आज टू अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट इफ वी आज द महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट वाई आर यू कलेक्टिंग महाराष्ट्र एस जी एस टी सो इट विल से दैट आई आई हैव गॉट द पावर्स ओके आई हैव गॉट द पावर्स टू लेवी एंड कलेक्ट द टैक्सेस राइट अच्छा नाउ सेवेंथ शेड्यूल टू आर्टिकल नंबर टू फोर्टी सिक्स आई विल टेल यू वॉट इज द रेलिवेंस ऑफ दिस आर्टिकल अंडर योर जी एस टी नाउ सेवेंथ शेड्यूल टू आर्टिकल नंबर टू फोर्टी सिक्स इन विच दे आर टेलिंग दैट देर आर थ्री लिस्ट ओके इन अवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन देर आर थ्री लिस्ट लिस्ट वन इज योर यूनियन लिस्ट ओके दिस कंटेन्स ऑल दोज मैटर्स ऑन विच ओनली सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज द राइट टू मेक लॉज okay list list 1 contains all those matters on which only central government can make the decisions or it can make the laws example income tax okay list 2 which talks about your state list it contains all those matters on which the decisions can be taken only by the state government okay example profession tax laws relating to profession tax and the last one last one is your list 3 that is your concurrent list okay concurrent list means it contains those matters on which central as well as the state government have the power to make laws can we say now gst is going to form part of this particular concurrent list because on this because on this the powers uh, 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 under your gst the power to levy collect the taxes etc is there with both central as well as the state government right now what was the need for constitutional amendment i have already told you this because of this constitutional amendment now we have got the powers that gst can be levied and collected by both center as well as the state very clear with this okay then uh, one very important thing which is to be remembered here is when we are talking about interstate supply okay interstate from one state to another state which tax was levied igst was levied okay for all the provisions okay all the provisions relating to all the provisions relating to interstate supply okay that will be that will be decided only by the parliament okay that will be decided only by the parliament just see the second point here parliament has got parliament has got the exclusive power to make laws can you see this it has got exclusive power to make laws with respect to goods or services in case of interstate okay in case of interstate from one state to another parliament will make the laws for the same parliament has given the power that we can levy and collect igst on it and do you recollect what are we going to do with this particular igst this will be ultimately shared between whom this will be ultimately shared between the center and the state right then the next important article here is article number 279a which talks about gst council now what is the purpose what is the purpose of this particular gst council okay now this article 279a this tells the president or this gives the powers to the president to constitute a joint forum of center and state now gst is a law of both center as well as state so it gives the uh it 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 says that let's constitute a forum let's constitute a council which will include members from the center as well as member from the state and this council let's form this council called as gst council now what will what will be the work of this gst council the work of this gst council will be to give recommendation to the union as well as to the state on matters regarding gst example what should be the rate on the products okay uh, that is how much percentage of gst should be uh, levied then which all products should be exempted which all products should be made taxable okay then should uh, then we will also notify some states okay which were uh, economically backward states now which we want to bring it at par with other states so some states will be classified as your 
special category states which will be given some special category of exemptions or the uh, uh, some special provisions will be made applicable to them okay then what will be the uh, threshold limit for registrations then uh, how the igst will be apportioned between center and the states now it's not that gst council will decide everything okay gst council will make recommendations the work of the gst council is to make something make a particular uh, make a draft of a particular law okay then present it before the union and the states and then they will decide whether to make it applicable or not are you clear with this now who all will be there in this constitution of constitution of gst this you have to remember this is a theory okay this you have to remember it compulsorily constitution of gst the chairperson will be the our uh, honorable uh, union finance minister then it will have some members the union minister of the state this person is a notified person okay union minister of state who is in the charge of revenue or finance that person will be the member from the center okay and then from each state each state whoever is the minister in charge of finance or taxation of each respective state they these people will come and they will be forming part of members of the gst council okay then you remember on petroleum natural gas atf etc gst will be applicable from a notified date so that date can be recommended by the gst council that from so and so date we can make the gst applicable on petrol diesel etc right Achha, now gst council will meet you must have seen in news etc also right gst council meeting is going to be held today and all those things so for a particular meeting to be a valid meeting can we say we should be having a quorum that is some minimum number of members should be present to decide on the matters so one half 50 percent 50 percent of the total number of members of gst council should be there so as to conduct a valid meeting okay so as to conduct a valid meeting and then that at that particular valid meeting decisions will be taken by respective number of members as stated here okay weighted average method of voting is uh, uh, taken up here okay i have given the example in the main lecture okay we have done the entire numerical example in the main lecture some weight uh, weightage will be given to central government some weightage will be given to the state government then we'll take a weighted average of it and then we'll finally come to know then we'll finally come to know whether the decision has been approved or not are you clear with this okay Achha. now if you want to that was for whatever we studied now about weighted average that was for the decision which is taken by the gst council can we do some changes in the gst council can we do some changes in the chairperson or in the members of the gst council etc yes you can do but for that can we say this gst council was formed because of an article number 279 so can we say if we want to do if we want to do uh, this thing changes in the gst council then in that case can we say again it is a constitutional amendment now if it is a constitutional amendment then in that case we'll have to go and take the approvals okay then we'll have to take the approvals from the lok sabha rajya sabha and from the respective states and by doing that by taking the approvals from those uh, houses and from the state legislatures you can do the amendment here are you clear with this and then finally in your textbook you have got something called as significant provisions significant provisions of constitution act 2016 okay so the points that we have studied about gst all those points have been incorporated here okay one or two different points are there here yes this this point is different here which can be tested for the purpose of uh, mcqs here the provisions relating to gst council came into force on 12th september 2000 and 16 12 september 2016 and the president constituted the gst council on 15 september 2016 only after that the gst law came into picture okay then earlier earlier uh, there were certain goods which were called as declared goods of special importance now that concept has been totally removed and then they are telling that then they are telling that from the date when the gst came into picture from that day for a period of one year for a period of one year there will be some transitional provisions because we are going from old law to new law so there will be some provisions there will be some ease or there will be some convenience given to you for the purpose of smooth transitions okay rest of the points which are given here in significant provisions those we have already covered in the earlier
Are you clear with this? Yes, this was the basics. Okay, this was the very, very basics of your uh, GST in India and introduction. Uh, yes, and one more thing which is deemed which you should assume is these lectures are your super quick revision so that you just get a overview of the same for understanding the provisions in detail either you can go with the regular lectures or you can even go with the fast track lectures okay these are these lectures are applicable or these are to be referred only when you feel like okay you need to revise this particular provisions or you need to do a revision one day before the exams then only use this particular lectures yes Okay.